look at something this morning. And before I even go into it, let me just invite the presence of the Lord to come. Let us pray. Eternal God and most righteous Father, we thank you, we praise you for just a wonderful day to be free in your house, dear God. So many places in the world, they cannot open the word of God, but we are free in this country to do so. And for that, we give you thanks. I pray now, dear God, that you might hide me behind the cross. Fill me now and use me to do that which you would have me to do. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Today I want to talk about how to use prayer. Now, when I look at something like this, I need every Christian to understand that prayer is essential to a Christian's life as oxygen is, a, is essential to breathing. Yeah, prayer is essential to a Christian life as oxygen is to breathing. If we as human beings don't breathe oxygen, what will happen to us? Okay, did nobody do chemistry? Was that chemistry or bio? <laughs> nobody went to science class? I flunked out in science, but I learned that. If we as humans don't breathe oxygen, we what? No. Thank you. <laughs> so listen to this. If we as Christians don't have a prayer life with our Lord and Savior, then we die spiritually. What? Yes, we do. Many persons sitting here this morning are dead spiritually. Oh my, pastor is rough this morning. You are existing by name only. So people will see you and say, oh, they go to Talpa Hawking Church. They're a Christian. But spiritually, you are dead. You know why? Let me tell you why. There is nothing behind your spirituality. If there is no prayer, there is no power. That's how it works. I need people to understand that. If you're going to be a Christian, you have to talk to your Lord and Savior. I don't know anybody that is in a relationship with somebody that you never talk to them. That isn't a relationship. And I keep on saying it to persons. People came to me and said, Mario, how did you and your wife exist for seven years apart? Well, she's here. You can ask her. We talked. <laughs> if we did not talk, then we would have trouble. Yeah, can you imagine seven years, you know, I left, came and did my studies, and then after a certain amount, I came back and said, hey, do you remember me? I'm your husband. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't work out. So you must have a prayer life with your Lord and Savior. So as I said, this morning's topic is how to use prayer. Now, I just want to look at a few ways of how we can use prayer. These are not the only ways, but I just picked out a few of them to help us to mature as Christians. Now, the first one I want to look at is use prayer as a weapon. Oh, pastor getting real bad this morning. He's telling us to get weapons out. Yes. Use prayer as a weapon. Now, let me tell you something. A weapon can be used to attack, and a weapon can be used to what? Defend yourself. That's what a weapon is used for. Use prayer for both. Use it to attack and use it to defend. But my major concern is many persons are not using prayer for the right reasons or against the right person. So they are not using prayer to defend against the devil or to attack him. They just have it there sitting around. Now let's draw a little story here. Think about it. A policeman or a police officer, let me not say man, a police officer carries a weapon, a firearm, right? But they use that firearm to defend or to attack. Now, if they see an innocent bystander being attacked by a perpetrator, they can use the weapon to attack the perpetrator, or they can use the weapon to defend themselves. When they use that weapon, they're either attacking or defending. That's how it goes. 
So when you think about it, a weapon is a good tool if it is used properly. Well, let me tell you something. Prayer is a good tool spiritually if you use it properly. We just need to use it on the right person. Who is the perpetrator? The devil. Listen, I don't want anybody praying any bad prayer for someone who have wronged you. <laughs> you know, dear God, I don't like Kathy. Kathy said something bad about me. Strike her with a lightning bolt. <laughs> no. God is not going to honor a prayer that is evil. Right? You need to turn the prayers on the persons who need it. So use the prayer as a weapon to defend you. Listen, some of you are like that boxing match. You ever seen that guy in, up, up against the ropes? And he's up against, and other guy's like, yeah. Mm, yeah, and he's like, just taking body shots. Stop taking body shots from the devil when you have a defense. Use prayer as your defense. And guess what? I've seen it many times that the guy has the other one on the ropes taking body shots, but he got his guard up. So he's not taking the shots as he And this guy is working. And he gets what? Tired. And then this guy gets one attack mode. Wham! Hits the canvas. Use prayer against the devil as a weapon to defend yourself and to attack him. Don't just stay on the ropes and take body shots from the devil. I want to give you a scripture that helps you. Now, many times we've read in the Bible, and everybody knows this scripture passage. They know about putting on the old armor of God. Everybody tell you to put on the best plate of righteousness, helmet, sword of the spirit. You know all that. And everybody says, yes, we know that, pastor. I've heard that preach a zillion times. I know it. But let me point out how that portion of scripture ends. Because many persons miss this. With all the different stuff that we're to put on to defend ourselves, listen what it ends with. With all prayer and petition, pray with specific requests at all times, on every occasion, and in every season, in the spirit, and this is in view. Stay alert with all perseverance and petition, interceding in prayer for God's people. So all those things that you're putting on in Ephesians to stand against the devil, you're putting on your helmet, you're putting on your breastplate of righteousness, you're putting on having your feet shod with the gospel of peace, the sword, everything that you have ready with you must be bound and tied up in prayer. That's what the Bible says. So make sure you understand how to use your weapon, who to use your weapon against, and use it. Second thing I want to look at this morning is use prayer as a guide. Listen, let me give you a little nugget. If you need to write it down, write it down. When you're in doubt, pray it out. Simple. When you're in doubt, pray it out. I use that all the time. See, I'm not that brilliant. <laughs> but I call on the one who is, and then it makes me look brilliant. <laughs> I tell you, that's the secret. Don't know what to do in a situation? Pray. Want to know what God's will is for our life? Pray. Having problems in relationships? Pray. All right, you're getting it. Whatever life throws at us that causes confusion, that needs decision making or problem solving, we? Pray. There you go. Use prayer as your guide. When I don't know what to do, I pray. When I'm confused and I don't know what to do, I pray. And I'm confused a lot. <laughs> yeah, people say, you're so wise. Yeah, because I tap into God's wisdom. If it was Mario to do it all by himself, oh, you realize he's not so smart, I know. <laughs> so tap into God's wisdom. Let God be your guide. Turn to the guide that knows all the answers. 
And listen, if you want to get in touch with this guide and you don't know how to do it, it's still the same thing. You need to pray. pray. That's how you get in touch with the guide. Pray. So use prayer as a guide. When you don't know what to do, use prayer as a guide. Let me share this verse with you. James 1 verse 5. Listen to this. If any of you lacks wisdom to guide him through a decision or circumstance, he is to ask our beloved God who gives to everyone what? Generously. No, that he, he keeps back some for himself. That's not what the scripture says. Who gives to only tall persons. No, it says to everyone generously and without rebuke or blame and it will be given him. Ask God. I didn't make this up. I read the scripture for myself. So when you, all of you keep on saying, you are wise beyond your years, I look at you and say, I know, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I ask for wisdom from God. So when you come with those deep searching questions, right, and you're thinking, ooh, his eyes are going up to the left, so he's accessing that part of the brain that gives all the wisdom. No, I'm accessing Jesus. Dear God, I don't know what to do. Give me something. Fill my lips. <laughs> That's what I do. Ask for wisdom, and he will give you. Third and finally, use prayer for restoration. Listen, people don't know how serious prayer is, and I want you to know how to use it this morning. Use it for restoration for yourself, and use it for restoration for others. Yeah, it's not only for you. Some people don't realize they think prayer is only for them. No. Well, let me start with others first. Now, when you are going through a difficult time, and you start going through a difficult time, you ask the church to do something for you. What do you ask the church to do? Thank you. Because many of them don't want to admit it. When you're going through a difficult time, the first thing you do is, put me on the prayer list. Ask the church to pray for me. Pastor, pray for me. Nothing is wrong with that. That's what prayer is to do. It's to help others. It's to uplift, uplift others who are going through their difficult times. And so, prayer is there to help others. But my question is this. Then why is it when you are going through your difficult time, right? You want people to pray for you. But when they're going through their difficult time, you are not praying for them. Ooh, I hit that one hard. Because guess what? Many persons are like that. Listen. If you see me going through a difficult time, don't come lie to my face. What lie are you talking about, Pastor? Okay, let me give you some of the regular ones that people use. When they come and see people in difficulty, I'm praying for you. You're in my prayers. Don't lie to me. <laughs> if you know you're not going home to pray for me, then shut up and keep quiet. I'm telling you the truth. Don't come and tell me I'm praying for you. You're in my prayers. My, you, you, we love say that as Christians. We, we use it so many times. Prayers, prayers, you're in my prayers. And then when you go home, you're not even praying for yourself. So how are you going to pray for others? Think about it. And so as Christians, we lie Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. <laughs> and when we see people at Dutch where we lie some more, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. And not one thing came out of your mouth for the person. Stop it. Don't do it. At times when Christians need actions, they need action of you praying for them. Don't give them just words. That's it. I'm keeping it simple right there. So make sure if person is in their darkest hours and need prayer, pray for them. Let me give you a scripture verse to help that out. 1 Timothy 2, verse 1 and 3. Now listen to this. It can't get any clearer than this. First of all then, I urge that petitions, which are specific requests, prayers, intercessions, prayers for others, and thanksgivings be offered on behalf of who? All people. Not just Mario. For all people. Listen what verse 3 says. 
This kind of praying is what? Good and acceptable and pleasing in the sight of God our Savior. Many persons say, how do we please God? Well, one of the ways is start praying for people. The Bible says it, that God loves this type of things. Remember, I always tell you the best way for joy, Jesus first, others second, and you last. So pray for others. Do you know when I get up in the morning and start my prayer time, I pray for everybody else, and then at the end I pray for myself? What? You ain't going through nothing, Pastor. That's why you can't save yourself for last. Oh, no. I got my own problems. But I can't be putting myself in front of others because then I'll get caught up in my own problems first and then don't remember to pray for anybody else. Ooh, you never know that happened to me too because it happens to you too. <laughs> That's the truth. That is why I start with others first and focus on their problems and go all the way down. Then when I get to me now, I can waste all the time I need on myself because I've already prayed for others. And that is pleasing to our Lord and Savior. The final one is pray for ourselves. Don't think prayer is not for you either. It's for us, all of us. So you pray for others first. You need to pray for yourselves. No, let me tell you something. Sometimes we are going through a problem. And we say, God, fix this problem. Or God, fix this person. You know, we pray and we pray and we say, God, if you don't intervene, this thing cannot be solved. You need to fix this problem, fix this person, remove this co-worker, get rid of this boss. And we are praying all the different things. And God is saying, hey, slow down. The problem is you. <laughs> because we are so busy looking out, we are not looking in. And so we need to understand that it's always easier to see someone else's faults. Uh-oh. Uh -uh. Probably I should duck. <laughs> but it's the truth. When we look out, we can see everybody else's faults and we don't see ours. Because we're the perfect one. You know, we're the ones that are praying. We're the Christian. We're the mature child of God. Well, we need to understand that there is someone who knows more than us and someone who is seeing us. And it ain't your spouse, it's God. So you need to understand, we need to pray to God about our own faults so he can restore us. Now, let me let you in on a secret. I'm not the best husband in the world. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Guess what? I'm not even the best man in the world. <laughs> it's no big secret. So when I pray for myself, I ask God to make me a godly example to my family, um, to my church. And I ask God to make me a godly father to my children. And very, important, very importantly, I ask God to make me a godly husband to Michaela. Now think about it. She's stuck with me. She signed a contract. <laughs> she has to put up with all this for the rest of her life. That's hard. <laughs> so I have to ask God to make me better for her. Because if I don't, and Mario does it all by himself, uh-oh, he's going to make some mistakes. And she's going to leave. That's what she's... <laughs> so you see, I need prayer too. And so this is the reason why you pray to God for restoration. Mario alone can't fix himself. You alone can't fix yourself. As Christians, we need to get over ourselves and ask God to restore us, right? If we get over ourselves and ask God to search us, put the spotlight on us, and work on us, it would fix a lot of issues in our lives. Ooh. Mm, Pastor, really terrible this morning. Let's look at Psalms 139, verse 23. So if you're upset with me, ups, be upset with God too, because I'm showing you the scripture. Look what the scripture says. This is what the psalmist says. Search me thoroughly. Woo! Not just look, but search me thoroughly, O God, 
and know my heart. Apart from searching and knowing my heart, he says, test me. Woo, I need to get a passing grade on this exam on self. He says, test me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there be any what? Wicked or hurtful way in me. And when he has done all of that, then he says, and lead me in the everlasting way. Whose way? God's way. We want to be better individuals to our spouses, to our friends, to our family, or just the overall better person. Ask God to search us and restore us. Wow. You know, Michael Jackson sings that song about the man in the mirror. Many of us don't like to look in the mirror. We like to look on the mirror from the side here. So somebody else is standing here and looking in and we're like, oh, look at that. Look what's that, that person. That, oh, yeah. But Michael Jackson said, look at the man in the mirror. I borrow a phrase from him. Everybody knows Michael Jackson. Because guess what? We always have problems within ourselves that we fail to see. Prayer can fix that. So in conclusion, prayer is essential to our Christian lives as air is to our lungs. Woo! No air in the lungs, we dead. No prayer in our lives, spiritually we are dead. Let's take a check of our spiritual life. You don't have to answer these questions, but listen to them. When was the last time you stood in prayer against the devil? When was the last time you prayed and asked God's guidance on circumstances you are facing? When was the last time you truly prayed and interceded on somebody's behalf? When was the last time you asked God to turn the spotlight on yourself? Only each person sitting here can truly answer that question for themselves. Let us pray. Eternal God and most righteous Father, sometimes we come into your house and we just go on on a daily basis, just living the lives and not realizing, dear God, that we're not even communicating with you. We're not praying to you. And dear God, sometimes as Christians, we get into the mode of just doing this Christian or spiritual life, life. It's just an everyday thing. We get up and we go to work, so we get up and say we're a Christian. But help us to understand, dear God, if we get up and go to work and we actually reach to work and don't perform, then we'll be fired. Help us not to disqualify ourselves from the ministry. Help us not to be disqualified from being called a Christian because we are not performing the way we should. I pray, dear God, that each and every individual here, including myself, may have a strong prayer life with you. I pray, dear God, if we did not have a prayer life with you, that let us just forget about the past and start one today. Help us to just pray to you. Help us to use prayer, dear God, as a tool to defend ourselves against the devil. Help us to use prayer as a guiding decision making. And help us to use prayer for others and for ourselves to rest, restore us back to where we need to be. We thank you, dear God, and we praise you for the word, dear God, that touched each and every hearts and minds here, including me that we might continue being obedient children of your kingdom, as you taught us to say, Our Father, Amen. So I trust and hope everybody will have learned something this morning how to use prayer.